AARP is a nonprofit, nonpartisan membership organization for people 50 plus, where our vision is for a society in which all people live with dignity and purpose and can fulfill their goals and dreams. Now in California, we are focused on developing livable communities for all ages. And to learn more about the work AARP is doing at the national, state, and local levels, visit aarp.org slash California CA. Now, as we referred to the last week, this is our hip hop happy hour, and we are ready for our part two of the celebration of the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Tonight, we will dive into interactive conversation as we explore long-term health and wellness benefits possible through participation in various elements of hip hop. Now, healthy living and aging are important to AARP members and their families. Our guide in this journey will be Dr. Jalil Abdul Abdul, who is an associate professor in clinical psychology and psychiatry at the University of Illinois at Chicago. And he is the co-director of the Urban Youth Trauma Center. He is one of the originators and nationally renowned experts on the use of modern rap music and hip hop culture to enrich psychosocial intervention for urban youth. We encourage all of you to be active in the chat and we'll take questions towards the end of the session. And Dr. Abdul Abdil will also engage throughout this event as well. There are some meeting guidelines we would like for everyone to adhere to. So please make sure to keep your line muted Use the chat to post questions, answer questions and more, but be respectful of others on the call by using respectful language and tone. Returning to the virtual mic right now, now is Dr. Janil Abdul Abdil. Welcome. Thank you all very much for having me. Glad to return and I will share my slides and we will get started. Hey, <clears throat> great to see everyone's wonderful faces. I have to keep my video over here so we can stay connected. This is part two, as we mentioned. We're going to talk about the focus on the physical wellness, and we take a holistic approach to healthy hip hop. It benefits the mind, body, and soul. Today, we'll emphasize the physical, and next week, we'll link it to the psychosocial, but be clear, they work hand in hand. In keeping with the theme, of classical rap, and you don't stop. Very famous book that was written too, for those of you who are hip hop historians. So as we start with that slogan, we won't stop. We're gonna dive right into celebrating <laughs> rap music and the five elements of hip hop culture with our focus on health and wellness. And stay active in the chat because I'm gonna keep throwing questions at you. First one, regarding our first element of hip hop culture, rapping, who is this? Please put the name in the chat if you know, and you can even add some songs or some works that this person is famous for. Now, for those who don't know, this is the one and only Ice-T, one of the OGs, the original gangsters, who's still rapping and performing at age 66. Plus, he has the longest performance by a male lead on a TV series in history for his role in Law and & Order. He also has led a rock band called Body Count, and he's famous throughout the country and is one of the people who has the credibility to be able to move back and forth, not only across the coast, but among, between the different generations, as young as well as old rappers pay him a lot of respect. I'll ask you, put in the chat, who's your favorite rapper? And if you can think of, you can put one who's over 50. We're going to be inspired by our elders tonight, which is us. Because I'm partnering with the Los Angeles chapter, I'm gonna give a few extra shout outs to the West Coast. And this is my first shout out. This is another legendary West Coast rapper. Who is this? Put his name in the chat if you know it and say what songs or works he's famous for. 
This is E-40, another Bay Area OG who's still rapping and performing at age 56. Plus, he's a successful business owner with social media apps, an investment company, and he once even owned, get ready for this, a Fat Burger franchise in Pleasant Hill, California. And I will show you celebrities, but I'm also going to show you some of us, us normal people, us regular elders, us regular senior citizens. And this is the first one I want to show. Her name was Greta Sergensen. She's from Sweden. And keep in mind, I'm going to show you examples from around the world to, to emphasize this international hip hop culture. Greta Sergensen, she started rapping at guess what age? 92 years old. She was already a musical performer. Someone asked her, could you rap like to connect to the young people? And she said, sure. And she started rapping at 92 years old and she kept rapping until she was 101 years old before she passed away. 101. There was also this California rapper named Quasar. He just started rapping on the Reddit app at 83 years old and he kept it going until he passed when he was 90 years old. Why did they do it? They enjoy it, same way we do. And rapping has physical health benefits of respiratory health. When you work in the lungs and the diaphragm and the throat, it relieves stress. It keeps you sharp, but your oral skills are clearly reciting complicated phrases and terms. And that physical part connects to the mental health part where you enjoy the benefits of self-expression, regulating and projecting emotions, building confidence in your performance and cognitive processing, keeping you sharp with your memory, your attention, your language, and your articulation, especially when you're performing your own lyrics, which many of these elder artists do. So there are many health as well as mental health benefits of performance. And today we're going to go through a playlist. We're going to give you brief clips from all the elements. We want to stay musical tonight. So we're going to celebrate this first hip hop cultural element of rapping with a clip from some West Coast legends, Roger Troutman, Dr. Dre, and Tupac, California Love. I'm jump on my head. All right. That should have brought back memories for many of us. For some of us from the hip hop era, for some of us also from that Zap uh, era that, that we all enjoy. Uh, and it's funny how the music continues to cycle and provide benefits through the generations, right? And and it's funny, you know, I always got to crack on, on the younger generation. When they were starting to do the auto tune, they thought like they invented that, right? I was like, I was listening to that way back in the day. Uh, but that'll be a story for another day, how we, how we roll with our, our young folks here. So now let's go to our second element of hip hop culture, DJing. Now, who is this? And ain't nobody from California, actually nobody should ever miss this. I, I know this, you all have this in there right away, right? And if you want, you can say the songs that this person is famous for. Now, this is Dr. Dre, who needs no introduction as a legendary rapper, producer, and now he's still performing at age 59 He's added acting and owning a music label. We know the famous story of Interscope. He has a top of the line headphone brand, uh, Beats by Dre, sponsoring new artists and producers. And he did a slamming live Super Bowl 56 halftime show two years ago in LA, right? And people are still talking about that. So put in the chat, who's your favorite DJ or producer? And so we celebrate our second element. And I know it's hard to pick with some of these, so I'm, I'm happy I'm not the one who has to respond to my questions. So pick one, you know, who's your favorite? And if you can, think of one who's over 50. I don't want to influence anybody. I see people are here from all over the country. I'm featuring some California folks. I, I'll give a quick shout out to some of my East Coast crew. Like one of my favorite producers out toward the East Coast is Primo, DJ Premier, uh, who's still having tremendous impact. So there's plenty of names. I'm going to be interested to see whose names have been mentioned uh, to my questions as we're going through this. And as we enjoy these celebrities, we're also celebrating our culture, those of us who follow rap and hip hop. So I want to keep showing you regular people like us. Now, this is a regular person like us, a senior citizen. Her name is Sumiko Iwamura. She's from Japan. Again, she started 
DJing at 77 years old. She's actually a Chinese restaurant chef in Japan. But she got interested in it. She enrolled in what is a DJ school, believe it or not. They do have those. And she's still currently performing professionally in clubs like Japan, France, and New Zealand, along with Japan. And so this shows you that you could still be active and not only be active, you could be at the top of the game. And you, she's, she's pushing 80, right? She's the oldest performing club DJ known in the media. Why does she do it? Again, she enjoys it. And DJing has physical health benefits of using fine motor skills to write or type the music, the hand and finger dexterity to manipulate the sound machines, and complex full body coordination to keep in sync when multitasking across multiple machine, machines and turntables. Plus the mental health benefits of reducing stress and anxiety when you're doing a creative hobby, expressing emotions, especially, and we pay attention to this, especially some emotions which are hard to put in words, but you can feel it in a certain type of track. And you think about mood music. Sometimes mood music is a lyric. Sometimes it's this, just the sentiment, the aesthetic of that track, whether I'm angry or I'm depressed or I'm happy or I'm bubbly or I'm celebrating things. So the music has a language of its own and you can improve your mood and your emotional well-being. You can help with your memory and your cognitive functionings, especially when you're learning and practicing complex sound constructions, like when you're sampling and we're about to see an example of that, especially when you're making your own music using your own turntables and mixes. So it brings a lot of physical benefits in terms of uh, uh, how, how you uh, work the motor, uh, the motor skills and the other things that I'm talking about. It also brings those psychological benefits. And we wanna show you two brief clips here. The first one, we're gonna celebrate the first uh, uh, cultural element that ever made it on vinyl. Right, we're going to celebrate the cutting and scratching on turntables to a world to an actual song that was by Grandmaster Flash and his Adventures of the Wheels of Steel. That was the first uh, record that ever nationally showed scratching, turntable mixing, and all the other things that DJs do. We'll show a brief clip here. This is a recent video where a DJ named Johnny M he redid the same mixing live. And it's on YouTube for those of you who like to go look at it. We're going to show a brief clip from there, and we're going to show another brief clip. You see he's going back to the vinyl. He's literally going to recreate this same experience. I'll skip ahead a bit. First clip on that. Now you look at the physical control and skill necessary to work two turntables and keep everything in time to the beat, right? I want to show you this other one, which is a more recent version, which also celebrates the history. It's not just us, but some of the young hip hop fans really enjoy the history. And this is a West Coast demonstration of that same scratching, but it's done by two DJs who are working together. And you can see it took two people to reproduce the skill of that original song. And you see the physical and mental skills, the coordination, the teamwork to further appreciate this.
Okay, so that just gives us a small snapshot of how sophisticated you have to be to do that type of DJing. And we just saw a senior citizen who not only can do it, but does it to the extent she gets international invitations. And look at all the benefits that we have for those of us who may like to DJ. We'll move to our third element of hip hop culture, breakdance. It's gonna get a little harder when I get to some of these, some of these other elements. Uh, who is this? They take a real hip hop head to answer this. All right. You put it in the chat. We'll give you a second. I, I'll see later. Did, did anybody get it? This is Richard Colon, famously known as Crazy Legs. He led the Rocksteady crew, which was founded way back in 1979, as the earliest face and organization for breakdancing for the mainstream American audience. He's still occasionally dancing at age what? 58. He was competing in professional open competitions until he was almost 50 years old. He's now hosting youth events, teaching dance moves. He was even invited by the Smithsonian Institution to contribute to the National Museum of American History. And in 2003, he was honored by the Jersey City Puerto Rican Day Parade. If you can, put in the chat, Who's your favorite break dancer? And some of them are rappers too. So that could be a dual question. Then think of who's over 50 and put them in the chat. Now, there's also the rest of us, not who may not be famous, but we're also enjoying break dance. This is a picture of Ben Hard, AKA Bitcoin. He was 66 years old and the world's oldest active competitive break dancer. And there was a break dancing performance group in New Zealand called Hip Operation. Like we say hip hop, they say hip operation. Their crew did set the 2015 Guinness World Record for the oldest dance group with an average age of how old? 80 years old. Consisted of five men and 18 women and included four people who, think about this now, they're break dancing and Four of them needed mobility aids. Five of them were in their 90s. Some of them are even deaf. Others are hard of hearing. And one of them is legally blind. Why do they do this? Because they enjoy it. And breakdancing has physical benefits of improving cardiovascular fitness for real. <laughs> Very high energy moves and increase your heart rate and your endurance. It increases your flexibility and your muscle strength because you have to use your entire body when you're doing that head to toe, all those head to toe movements, you gotta include your core muscles, especially those stop moves when they're spinning and they just stop, which takes a ton of strength and body control. You control your weight because you burn in calories and you maintain your physique because you're building muscle mass. All those physical benefits, plus the mental health benefits of boosting confidence with your self-expression and creativity, especially when you're connecting or competing with your older peers or even gaining status with the younger generation. You're improving your focus and your concentration, and you're reducing stress with music and movement that permit relaxation and enjoyment. So many, many benefits. We're gonna celebrate this third element of hip hop called breakdance with some younger dancers. And I'm gonna pick a couple of beats it may sound familiar to you. I'm gonna let it play. Uh, this is out. This is, you're gonna hear an LA, an LA affiliated beat, and we're gonna see some of our younger folks who are still keeping the traditions.
never ceases to amaze me, those movements that they do. I could never break this, <laughs> even when I was young. Uh, but it's fascinating. And I think some of our seniors are competing in this. I want to show you this other brief clip because it will incorporate um, some more recent moves and is built off a techno rap beat. This is a 2020 competition that was way in the Ukraine. Okay, again, showing hip hop is international and really ageless. Listen carefully. It's the latest thing. You know, I could go on watching that all day. I'm just giving you all little samples so we can appreciate these elements and think they all the physical and mental benefits of doing this. And some of you hip hop fans out there on the West Coast, I hope you did hear Egyptian Lover. Like went from way back in the day, uh, one of the classic beats that I first learned about, like L.A. techno rap, techno rap. It was very, very powerful. So now I've been asking you some questions about the chat. And now I have a question that reflects the contest that has been run by AARP. So this is question number one for the gift giveaway, like we had last week. This is a unique AARP fan with West African artwork. Please put in the chat the answer to this question. Who was a DJ that first became nationally known from multiple turntables, mixing and scratching? Put that in the chat. Our AARP team will monitor that and we'll keep track of who is a lucky winner for these nice West African fans. We're going to move to our fourth element of hip hop culture, which is graffiti art. This is very difficult. Who is this? Let me see. You put the name in the chat. And if you know what art that he's famous for. This is Kenny Scharf. He was actually born in Los Angeles and he moved to New York where he became a well-known painter, installer, and graffiti artist in Brooklyn. And his artwork creatively portrayed pop culture, comic books, and cartoon characters, including those by Hannah Barber. Then he moved to doing biomorphic imagery. Put in the chat if you know someone who's your favorite graffiti artist over 50. And again, some of the people who do graffiti art also happen to be rappers and or producers and or break dancers. Hopefully uh, this won't spoil it for somebody, but one of your best graffiti artists is also someone who used to rap way back in the day, which was Fab Five Freddy. Now there are many of us regulars who also still are actively with graffiti art. I went way over to Portugal. And I found this group, they're called LATA65. They are a street art club in Portugal. All members are how old? Between 60 and 90 years old. Now, check this out. Not only do they do graffiti art themselves, like you see depicted here, they connect with other senior citizens. They do outreach and engage other senior citizens. They hand out free spray paint, gloves, and masks and they take them out to go paint together as part of a group activity. They also bridge the age gap by reaching out to younger people and encouraging them and teaching them how to do the graffiti art. Why do they do it? Because they enjoy it. And graffiti art has physical health benefits of stress and anxiety reduction. It allows you to do creative expression. You get that exercise of walking through the neighborhoods. And believe me, if you ever seen graffiti art, you have full flexible, uh, physical flexibility. We have to go through this range of painting and squatting and doing body contortions. And you have healthy outdoor activities. Now, it also has the mental health benefits of improved social skills, many groups, and organizational opportunities. You can improve your communication, your relationships, your sense of belonging, your teamwork, your community connections, and even your neighborhood pride. And if you ever come to Chicago, 
There's uh, there are neighborhoods which have nothing but walls full of murals which have graffiti art that beautify the neighborhood. I'm going to just show you this example of a person who's depicted here whose name is Richard Morando. He's famously known as Seen, like S-E-E-N. He's 62 years old. He's been called a godfather of graffiti. He's been interviewed about his career. He's been in documentaries, movies, international art exhibits, digital video games. He does t-shirt printing, and now he's even a tattoo artist. So you can look up Seen, and you will see a lot about his career. Let's move to our fifth and final element of hip hop culture, which is beatboxing. All of you should get this. I'm just teasing. Many of you might get this. Who is this? Put his name in the chat if you know. And say what beatboxing or other songs he's famous for. This is the legendary Dougie Fresh, who is known as the first human beatbox. He pioneered the ability to imitate drums, special effects, and other percussion sounds using only his mouth. And he used to imitate sounds that he heard when he was walking home from school past record stores. His classic 1980 song, Lottie Dottie, is one of the most sample songs in music history. His style still influences current dance moves, like it's called the Dougie that became popular recently. He just received the Lifetime Achievement Award at the 2019 American Beatbox Championships for his pioneering contributions to beatboxing specifically and music in general. And there are many of us who are regular citizens, regular senior citizens who still actively beatbox. There's one person called Kenny Muhammad. He's 56 years old and he's known as a human orchestra and he gives international performances. You can look him up. And this, I wanted to emphasize of how it not only brings the physical and the mental, but also the social benefits. This is a father and daughter team. The, the young woman's name is Nicole Paris and her father's name is Ed Cage. He's 51 years old. He started beatboxing back in the 80s and the, 19, uh, in the 1980s in the St. Louis hip hop scene. Then he taught his daughter Nicole as a way to connect their relationships. She also now beatboxes. She incorporates the electronic beats which is fascinating when you hear her do it. And they now do public performances in, and they even playfully battle on YouTube. And it's a bonding experience. Why do they do it? Because they enjoy it. And beatboxing has physical health benefits of cardiovascular exercise, takes a lot of energy and deep breath control to be able to do the beatboxing. You have to have lung capacity. You have respiratory functionality. You also need that core strength with abdominal muscles to control breath and create those beats. Plus, there's the mental health benefits of creativity because really beatboxing allows you to be as creative as you want to be. As your imagination is the only limit. The combination of sounds and rhythms, it boosts your self-esteem, provides a sense of accomplishment. You have a focus and concentration as you construct a performance. It relieves stress. You can get rid of that anxiety. It can calm you down when you have that rhythm beat and it allows you to connect to, to the younger people. So I'm going to show you a brief clip to celebrate this fifth hip hop cultural element. And it's a new thing which has been happening recently. So they're still beatboxing, but they started something called a beatbox showdown with team performances that even Dougie Fresh would be proud of. So I'm going to play this, a brief clip of this, so you can see how they do team beatboxing. Okay, just wanted to give you a brief clip of that. So the young people are taking it in another direction, but this is the creative uh, uh, continuation of that legacy. And by the way, this was done way in Krakow, Poland. And you think about how 
hip hop has not only flourished here, but it has such an international influence. And now you go back on the spot. Question number two for the gift giveaway for ARP, this unique tote bag. Please put in the chat to answer this question. First three people who respond correctly will get the bag. What are some of the main physical health benefits of breakdancing? I mentioned many. What are some of the main physical health benefits of breakdancing? And put as many as you can as fast as you can. All right. Now, as we begin to wind down, the last clip of the night, I wanted to bring us back full circle to the beginning of this presentation. We want to go way to Sweden, and we're going to celebrate a new version of Grandmaster Flash on the Wheels of Steel that was done in 2019 in his honor when he was getting an award over in Sweden. And this incorporates multiple hip-hop cultural elements in the performance. Okay, so you saw all elements. You saw dancing, beatboxing. You absolutely saw DJ. And uh, the young woman back there was scratching. And you saw how quick her fingers were moving and how precise things had to be. Um, and Grandmaster Flash was actually that gentleman in the, in the hat who was featured in the audience uh, celebrating him. So it, it really is a was a wonderful performance. Now, I have time for one last guest clip that I'm going to get to. Um, I wanted to make sure... We're paying attention. So this is me with my beatbox. I'm, I'm pointing at y'all right now. Did you hear all of the physical as well as mental health benefits? We do things because we enjoy it. And when we practice this hip hop culture in a positive way, you get a lot of the psychological, emotional, and physical benefits while you're enjoying what you do. And, and the key word here is just stay active. Enjoy the part of the elements you like, and you heard me bring up people who didn't even start till they was almost 80, right? You can still do it. You can still get involved and get all those extra benefits, even if you decide to go join one of those graffiti art classes, just like we had that street crew of senior citizens who are out there, the, the sense of community, the sense of connection, just enjoying yourself, uh, breaking down all this post-COVID isolation, which still lingers around. These are very, very many uh, benefits of hip hop culture. And the overall message is hip hop is fascinating, exhilarating, and we still celebrating this art and this culture. You can be over 50, you could be over 60, you could be over 90, as we've heard. But you can enjoy these benefits because they're timeless. And on that note, the last clip I'm gonna play for you for just a minute or so is my last artist that's celebrating the West Coast. You may have heard him, heard of him before. I know, I know you enjoyed some of it. I'm gonna bring so great. So we'll end on that positive note as we go to the Q&A. Uh, if MC Hammer's still out there moving around like that, putting those youngsters to shame, we certainly can hang in there ourselves. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Joyce, as we begin our question and answer period. Wow, did you see me not dancing? I, I had to get the beat going. I mean, it's, I can, how can you not feel that beat. I mean, it's like, oh my God, thank you so very much. 
Uh, it's just that's just absolutely wonderful. So thank you, Dr. Abdul uh, Abdul Abdul, for that phenomenal presentation. And now we're going to bring some questions or comments from you, our attendees, to Dr. Abdul Abdul from the chat that was queued up by our staff. So talk to me, group. What do we have here? Let's see here. What about should I get lessons on some of these elements to ensure I can get the right health and wellness benefit from it or them? What do you think? So I certainly think that it's more accessible now. Um, you may be able to look at local park districts or community groups or even youth organizations that will have like a senior section. And I even want to encourage you, sometimes they'll invite you to come join them. <laughs> so, you know, don't don't discriminate against yourself. Uh, go get involved. They're, usually the young people are very happy and they actually feel, i am be honest with you, they actually feel very affirmed. Mm -hmm. It's something that they enjoy. It's something that you are taking the time and energy to connect your own history with hip hop and embrace them where they are with it as well. So you can find formal instruction, like a lot of gyms have hip hop dance class, uh, there are art schools, there are um, park districts, um, there are boys and girls clubs that may have um, all of these different activities. You may not find as much beatboxing, but trust me, there are beatbox organizations around the world. So if you look, you probably will find it. All of that being said, there are benefits to being taught like our, uh, the, like the Japanese DJ who learned, went to DJ school, but don't let that stop you from just having fun. Because you can do things on your desktop, you could do things uh, with your smartphone where you're enjoying the music, you're making the music, you're making the lyrics, you, you know, using auto-tune. And if that makes you feel better and gives you a good mental and physical uh, position in life, then you go ahead and enjoy that and don't feel like you have to be an expert to start. Okay, that's good. Uh, now you mentioned this once before, but I'm gonna bring it up again. So how does hip hop benefit your physical health and overall wellness as a 50 plus old today? Now you mentioned that before, so let's make sure we solidify that again. So you'll see all the physical benefits and I wanna suggest over this presentation, we covered from head to toe. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. Keeps your mind sharp, keeps your fingers, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> dexterous. Um, it keeps your core active. It can expand or at least preserve your respiratory capacity and your core muscles. It, especially even if you're painting, but definitely if you're doing the dancing, it'll, it'll keep you strong. Um, it'll keep you flexible. Um, and you will also connect to other people. So I think you can really go from head to toe and look at all of the benefits, cardiovascular, cognitive, and community that will benefit you being part of rap and hip hop culture. And again, in a group or if you're alone, you can still enjoy your hobbies alone. I just encourage folks, enjoy it with other people. Sometimes you get that additional benefit and connection. Wow, thank you. You mentioned earlier about hip hop artists. But there are also hip hop artists that are in poetry and fashion and et cetera. Can you tell us a little bit about some of those also? Sure. So I'll probably I'll take some of the elders in hip hop. So <laughs> okay. if you want, yeah. because the young people are doing it too. And actually the young people have had those multifaceted lanes to commercial success open wider, faster than the older generations, because you got the internet. You got ways that you can market things. You got Amazon. You got all these different things. You can use SoundCloud and all these ways. You don't have to rely on a record company giving you a stamp of approval. You can market yourself. And there are people who won Grammys who really have marketed their self. But back to the uh, question you asked, I think if you look at like a Dr. Dre, <clears throat> Dr. Dre started off when he was young, okay? He went on to produce. He's trained himself and had support how to rap. I'm not gonna tell you he's the best lyricist in the world, but he can make a record, okay? And there's different, you know, like the kids say, there are levels to this, there are levels to this. So he's a at least commercially successful rapper, right? He has helped produce movies. 
and soundtracks. Um, he clearly has had a hand in technology. He has helped influence fashion. I mean, I hadn't been out to California in my life, and I was sporting a Raider hat. Uh, just, they happen to be my favorite football team, too, so I'll tell you all that full disclosure. Uh, but, I mean, people out there wearing Raider hats and different things. So he's he has apparel. Uh, and they have now learned a big part that I hope us elders can help them with is they have learned the business of being yeah. successful. So knowing about royalties, licensing, contracts, um, being able to open up the books, as they say, and be able to keep track of your finances. Those are things which pioneers like Dr. Dre and others set in motion. And so you have a number of role models. I just picked them because he's one of the elders that everybody you know, typically knows about. Um, let me be fair also and mention another name uh, that you all can go Google who does not get the credit he deserves for being a pioneer because he has a country accent, but go look at the history of Master P. Uh -huh. All of the things that I just mentioned, Master P was doing way back in the mid to early 90s. All the things that people do when they say, oh, I'm a, I'm, you know, a multifaceted business person, like Jay-Z and you know, different things, Kanye and even you know, Cardi B and all of those, and Nicki Minaj, and that. he was doing all of that independently financed way back in the 90s. He just doesn't get the same credit for what he was doing. Wow, um, thank you so much. Now, this is a serious question. So how has hip hop gone from a detriment to society to be embraced by society over the 50th years? From a detriment to being praised? Yes. Okay, yes. I'll give you I'll give you Come my on, non give it to I'll me. Give it to me. I'll give you my non-cynical <laughs> comment. I'll say profit. Ah, okay. So hip hop, as we have seen through these slides, has been such a cultural phenomenon that at first shows like the Grammys and others try to dismiss it or deny it mm -hmm. to retain credibility in the music industry. They had no choice but to embrace it. Unfortunately, though, they embrace it from a profit perspective, which will just as easily promote negative trends in the music and sensationalize through social media some of the negative interactions between the artists hmm. versus back in the classical days when you almost had to be talking about something positive to be put on, as they say, to, to be welcomed. i tell you a quick story. You can go uh, look up LL Cool J for all, those, all my New Yorkers. You might know if you, you know if you old timers like me, you remember what I'm talking about. LL Cool J, who is a teen phenomenon. When Public Enemy, X-Clan, Queen Latifah, uh, KRS-One, and others came out, they were having concerts where you had no choice but to be positive and pro-Black. LL Cool J was in his hometown in New York, and he came on after uh, you know artists like Cool Mo D and some of those other positive pro-Black artists. He was literally booed off the stage in his hometown of New York. And they, people complained all he was doing was talking about cars, money, and women. LL Cool J, the legendary LL Cool J, was booed off the stage in his hometown in New York because people complained that he was only talking about money, cars, and women. Now, you imagine wow. how much had to change <laughs> for you to now feature that, <laughs> trying to get you know, record deals and promoting your music. There was definitely a different aesthetic back then. Uh, I don't think we should beat up the young people for their music, but we should hold them accountable for content and mention that there are other ways of expressing yourself. And I'll give you a quick example. Uh, one of the artists who started making some changes is Little Baby, uh, T.I. Uh, some of the new artists have started pivoting toward trying to be more positive. And one of them, Young Thug, he he's specifically said, I'm going to stop making that type of music because I feel ashamed that I have put out such negative material. I'm going to start doing things in a more positive way. So we got to give our young people a chance you know, to, to grow up and mature. Here's a good question. Any recommended websites or YouTube channels for seniors regarding the hip hop fans? Any, come on now. We, I know there got to be something out there that you can recommend. 
So I said, go join the young people <laughs> at the places. Like, and the reason I'm saying this, I'll make it quick. But there's a reason I'm saying it. Go join the young people at Genius, um, Complex, uh, XXL, uh, DX, BET, MTV. Not only go there and uh, go engage in the conversations and help them expand their minds around what hip hop culture is beyond profitability and commercial exploitation. Your voice combining with theirs makes the overall community and society smarter and better. And I'm going to say, perhaps something like this is the start of those type of list servers. Perhaps, not putting it on you all, but perhaps AARP may consider an opt-in you know, list server or email list that you could get the hottest news and information and you could have a conversation from a, an elder perspective, a senior perspective on what's happening with the current trends in the music and the people like we're talking about now, you should know about, right? We could share that information. And I'm gonna put one other and out there. And when you are, I know people on this call are doing positive things. You can't tell me, it's not people on this call doing positive things in all these elements of hip hop culture and at least one of them. You know, it could be poetry, spoken word, movie making, whatever it is, share that. Spark us with some ideas that not only can educate the young people, but it, we could be resources for things we may do locally as well as through uh, virtual national platforms. So I'm encouraging you amongst I know that all the other things that you got going, but <laughs> okay. perhaps if there's an opt-in for people who express this interest, there might be some electronic space made so people can enjoy that and connect with each other. Oh, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! This is very interesting. So thank you again, Dr. Abdul-Abdul, for the second of the three-part series. Now, before we bring our final poll of the night, what about some closing remarks or parting words that you'd like to share with the audience? Well, I wanted to part on this slide, which is a happy intergenerational family. Let this be a symbol of the connections we can make through rap music and hip hop culture, not only with each other, but also with our younger folks, right? And think about all the physical as well as mental, psychological, emotional benefits that we've mentioned here. It should be an inspiration for us to enjoy our hip hop hobbies while we're also keeping ourselves healthy, mentally and physically. And this is really what it's all about. So I hope everybody, as we all age, because we gonna age, right? <laughs> uh, you can always get started in something new. You could pick up multiple hip hop elements. And as we age, let's all enjoy our families and each other with a healthy hip hop life. Wow, thank you so much. Whew. Wealth of information. Now we have a familiar poll for all of our audience to take before we close out the night. You've heard this before, so let's see what your answers are now. Which of the five fundamental slash foundational elements of hip hop would you would have a positive impact on cardiovascular health? You know, we talked about the graffiti again, graffiti art, talking about bebopping. Talking about that break dancing, Maxine and Jane. What do you think? Ooh, it's kind of coming in. What do you guys think? I see some of the answers have changed a little bit. I see the answers coming in. They, they are changing just a little bit, but that's good. That means you've learned something. That's great. few more seconds and then we'll close the poll. Okay. So we have break dancing is really kicking it off here. 65%. Well, that's pretty good because we saw a lot of break dancing and that was a lot going on. So I really appreciate that. Thank you all so very much. 
So don't forget to visit www.aarp.org forward slash CA to register for our final session of the series taking place on February the 29th at 5.30 Pacific time. To access our events on the calendar, learn about our other activities on our event. Again, thank you everyone behind the scenes of this session. We have Vince and Connie and Marissa and Antoine. Oh my God. And of course, my Zoom audience here. Again, my name is Joyce Howard, and we do hope you enjoyed this session. And please be on the lookout for our survey via email. Again, thanks and 